so we're literally 50 miles north of Mexico. Chopping off some subwoofers at 10 o'clock at night. Sometimes that's what it takes. Dude's like, yeah, I live in Tucson. I'm like, you don't live in Tucson, dude. This is way, way past Tucson. That is... Is that a... I hope that's a dog. It's not. It's a coyote. Is that a fucking... That's a coyote. Holy <laughs> shit. What's up, coyote? That is a goddamn coyote. Yeah. Get the fuck out of here, man. <laughs> Anyways, adventures. Is this the way that I came? No. Oh my god, I'm fucking lost already. Shit. It's a curb, god damn it. Ugh. Yeah, we came this way. Did we? Yeah. It didn't look like we came. There's the fucking coyote again. Okay. Go so get the road runner. Yeah, we came up here and I made a left. Okay. Alright. Uh -huh. Why don't you get out your map, mama? Okay. Or no, we came from that one. That way over there. Yeah. This way, which doesn't even look like a road. There we go. Okay. So anyways. There we go. There we go. To the 19. I never, yeah, to the 19. That's a shortcut? Nope. It said make a right. Be great if you told me about the map. Map lady. Yeah, you're going the right way. Okay. Anyways, it's dark, mm -hmm. so. And then there was construction south of Tucson. So, and then of course I go the speed limit, which drives everybody fucking nuts. Like I'm an old person, and this is a hybrid, so leave me alone. Oh, it was great too. I told Larry, I was like, hey, I got my first letter from JL, cease and desist. Just like, congratulations. <laughs> So yeah, I ended up helping, uh, I, I ended up going back and working like another two, I think two or three hours just to help them because they, the, the, they fucked up the, uh, yeah, we, we got to go into the underpass to get back on the freeway. So, but uh, yeah, I ended up going back and uh, when the, the shipment got stopped and it had to get repacked in LA they just fucking mixed boxes they were just like whatever so now we gotta go through every fucking pallet disassemble it sort it and then reassemble it so back on 19 north cattle guard there we go we're back on the road looking for a goddamn Taco Bell oh my god I never thought I would want a Taco Bell and fuck you too Taco Bell taking away my double decker supreme and my mexican pizza which has nothing to do with mexicans and nothing to do with pizza so but uh night driving adventures for robots so i got a bunch of woofers done and i'll do videos about those tomorrow after a good night's rest so because i got a really good workout and i think i soaked at least three shirts. 75 through here, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I soaked like three shirts and was getting like dizzy, but I hadn't had a good workout in like that in a, in a while, so it was nice. Green Valley, Arizona, by the way. Never heard of it. I think I've only, I only went to Nogales once, right? I don't know. Yeah, I went down there for, uh, to check out the build house that uh, they used a build house down there for the Diamond Audio D7 series and you know Esoteric did same, they used the same build house 
which of course is not in America, even though it says made in the USA on the album. The box was made in USA, and then they didn't even pay the vendor. But um, yeah, it was made in Nogales, on the other side of Nogales. Nogales is a border town, by the way, for those that don't know. Yeah, it's always, yeah, that was the other thing was like, there you go, welcome to Arizona. And then um, like all the signs start reading kilometers and shit like that. But it was good. We uh, we listened to we right now we're listening to Emily, Emily Blunt on Stern, and then uh, we listened to Dave Grohl do a phone interview, which was cool. He's talking about his documentary that he did with uh, did about vans and just bands and vans. And then uh, we listened to Michael Che, which was really good. I really like that interview with Michael Che. So if you don't have Sirius, I highly recommend it. Uh, I know everybody loves Joe Rogan. Because now he's taking, what, horse dewormer, whatever. There we go, come on. Attraction, Taco Bell. Taco Bell is the attraction. Nope. What does it say? What do they say? McDonald's, KFC. KFC, uh, be close by fuck, god damn it, it is 10 o'clock. It's a little shitty town. Probably end up Jack in the Box. Jack in the Box tacos are not bad, especially when you're hungover. It's like, like, I, when I was in Mexico one time, they're like, because me and the guy's son that I was visiting, they eat um, uh, cabeza tacos. The, it's, they take the whole head of the cow and they just like boil it and stew it all day and the meat all falls off. And, and it's a little, um, they said it's really good for hangovers. I was like, whatever, it just tastes like a taco. So, but, you know, it's Mexico. They, you know, there's, I love it, like, a restaurant down in Mexico is just like, it's an empty sand lot that they just put a tarp over, and then between, like, six and ten, they're like, yep, this is a restaurant now. <laughs> so, I remember one time my, uh, my brother took me to, um, do you want to stop? I don't really want to stop. No. I'm just get out and get the fuck out of here. Um, it took me to Carolinas. Carolines? Carolinas. I don't know. It's a, it's a whatever, semi-famous Mexican restaurant in Phoenix. And the, the busy one was down there at the airport. And he used to eat there a lot because he worked at the airport for FedEx. And he's like, i got to take you to this place. Okay. And so instead of ordering a burrito, he orders all the ingredients for a burrito and he's like making his own so that he can take it home later. Uh, I'm not sure if I told you any stories about how cheap my brother is, but he's insanely cheap. So, but anyways, so he breaks out these tortillas, which are fresh and they, they taste amazing. And he just throws them right on the table. And I go, dude, don't you want to like put down some paper or something like that? He goes, pretend you're in Mexico. And I was like, mm, okay, yeah. <laughs> But I always thought that was the best line. He's like, just pretend you're in Mexico. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh yeah, don't worry about it. That's how it goes. They can't make up their mind on this speed I know. I wish they would. I think it's a trap for white people. And it might be. White people, party white people come back from Nogales after sneaking drugs across the border. They're like, man, I can sell these pills. Blah, 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 blah. They're like, well, now you got to get them out of your butthole. She brought them across. Like, these are a lot of, what do they call? What is a Hulk bricks or something like that? Whatever. I don't know. I don't. I don't know drugs. Sorry, I don't know drugs. I am not cool. I'm not a cool person. But it was nice to listen to Michael Che though talk about his experiences on how he got on SNL and also some of some of the behind the scenes of you know writing and how sketches get made and stuff like that and then he wrote some sketches for uh, um, Eddie Murphy when Eddie Murphy came back and hosted it was it was like a really you know big deal so what does that one say 65 65 I'm doing about 65 Oh, yeah, I got to pass a cop on the way here. That was weird. He was, like, going 70, and it's 75 through there. And I was like, 
It is 75. I think he's testing me, so. I was just like, I'm passing this cop. I'm white. I can get away with it. <clears throat> now it's 50. Boy. These motherfuckers. Titan Missile National Historic Landmark. Down to 425. Sawarita exits. And then they got night crews out of here. We're at the Taco Bell, Mama. <laughs> you want to stop? We can stop. Yeah, now I'm thinking about roast beef and 69 and some stripper. <laughs> I like your side, you're all. <sighs> really? Really, Patrick? Really? Yes, really. Left lane closed ahead. Alright, guys, I don't think you want to watch this eat Taco Bell. That's gross. So I will talk to you later. I love you. Thank you for watching. And uh, I will... Oh, yeah. Tomorrow's Base Friday. Thank Gonzo. It's Base Friday. I'll do a bunch of demos for uh, some 18s that I built. There's a Phi one that I had to finish. And <sighs> Phi wouldn't sell me a replacement cone. Even though they got recon kits back in stock. So... I was like, dude, can you please sell me a cone? This guy really wants it to match his other one. And then, you know, the Phi cap, you know, with a little carbon fiber or whatever. Nope. Didn't even answer my email. That's how important I am, you guys. JL Audio knows me, but Phi don't care. DC is pretty cool. Rusty has sold me lots of parts over the years. So, is it? Oh, okay. I better get off the phone and drive. So... I love you. Talk to you later.